Inside for Haaland. His right foot. Haaland this time finally with his right foot scores. Dortmund make it 2-1. Within 5 or 6 minutes, we've completely turned around the scenario. Looking for that pass for Marco Royce. Our chances here now near post. Marco Royce scores again against Bayern Munich. Getting the equaliser. Running straight down to the camera. Champions League knockouts with Borussia Dortmund begin in this episode. As you guys know, we managed to top our group. And in this episode, we're going to be revealing our opponents for the round of 16. Well, who am I kidding? I accidentally already revealed our opponents in the last episode. And it's Chelsea who will be facing two legs against them in this one. First one being away from home, a trip to London. Chelsea in the Champions League. Okay, this should be fun. I think if we're being honest with ourselves, any hope for winning the Bundesliga is just gone with Bayern being near perfect. Our entire hopes for trophies rest on, of course, the DFB Pokal and the Champions League. So it's going to be a difficult season. But for now, I think we'll be putting the Bundesliga on the back burner and just be focusing on the cup competitions. Also in this one, we're going to be making a few important tactical changes that could be key for this series. It really is an important episode today, guys, because those two games against Chelsea could be season-defining, especially since Bundesliga our hopes have been crushed. So it's going to be a massive one. And if you guys are enjoying this series, keep the support coming in by dropping a like in the video. If you guys can smash out, let's up the like target a bit because I know you guys can smash it. 5,000 likes and I get you an episode tomorrow, 100%. Let's see if you guys can smash that subscribe as well. If you are new around here, we just hit 250k subs and we're going for more and more. Press conference to kick off the episode. Try to add Mukuku in January. It will be fun and realistic. So, as you guys know, Dortmund have a supremely talented player in Mukoku, but he's not actually in FIFA at the moment. That's because he's under 17. And there's some rules that EA cannot add players under 17 in the game. Exactly what happened with Ansu Fati. And I remember back on FIFA 20's Barca career mode, I actually added Ansu Fati in the game through like creating him before the series started. Now, I'm sorry I completely forgot to do this with Mokuku and that's why we don't really have him in this series. Now, I'm trying to figure out maybe with a few mods if we can we can like add him to the career mode, but I'm not sure if that's possible. Maybe what I can do is like scout a youth academy player, get him to have similar stats to Mokuku and change his name and stats to that of like what could resemble Mokuku. I'm not sure if that's possible. Any of the mods or someone who's you know, really aware of how the modding system works. If this is possible, let me know in the comment section. It'd be a big help. But I really want to try and make this happen. But if it has to happen, it'll probably happen next season. So stay tuned to find out if this is actually possible for me to do. Next up, how will you prepare for your Chelsea games in the next one to two episodes? By the way, both legs will be in this episode. As I said, with the Bundesliga hopes being crushed already, it just makes sense to focus on the Champions League. So we'll be wrapping up the round of 16 in this episode itself. Now, the plan against them, I think I'm just going to stick to my guns. I'm not going to play defensive or anything. I feel like we're the better team compared to Chelsea. We've got players like Haaland and Sancho. We should be taking the game to them. And they're fourth in their league. So it's not like we're facing the best team from England. So I'm definitely fancying my chances here. But I got to be careful because remember Chelsea in real life with the same squad in the Champions League semi-final so they have the talent 100% Timo Werner playing against the Bundesliga side again he'll definitely want to score so it's gonna be a fantastic game that's for sure super entertaining hopefully but hopefully we'll come out on top next up would you consider putting Saka to right mid and Sancho to left mid so they can cut inside and make something happen absolutely in fact this is what I'm going to try and figure out in this episode. That's going to be the big tactical change we make. Switching them around because they're already really um, capable of playing in those positions. They don't even lose that many ratings. So I want to try and make this happen. It just makes sense for Saka as well as Jaden Sancho. They'll be so much better if we try and pull this off. So we're going to be doing development plans and all to make this happen. And I feel like especially with the new formation we're using the 4-3-3 attack. It just makes sense. And if we can get them to a 5-star weak foot as well, they'll be crossing balls for Haaland no problem at all and offering a lot cutting inside. So 
That's going to be the big tactical change we figured out, but it's not going to be easy to pull this off. Development plans need to, you know, work in our favor. With that, press conference done for today. In an episode where things really weren't going our way, Jaden Sancho stepped up, delivered a few important assists and goals, and that's why he picks up the Player of the Episode award. Okay guys, to switch around Sancho and Saka's flank, we gotta put them in appropriate positions, so development plans are gonna be key. Now, can we convert Sancho to a left winger? Let's find out we can. It'll only take 25 weeks and it will also improve some of his key stats like finishing. Let's hope that goes through quickly. And we're also going to do the same thing with Saka to try and convert him to a right winger. Is that going to work? 25 weeks. Perfect. So same amount of time for both players. Half a season basically to be fair. But it might happen a bit quicker. Who knows? But we're putting development plans on them. And I'll be sticking playing them on these flanks for the foreseeable future because I feel it's more beneficial for the team. Quick season goal update. Last episode, we had another chance to win against Bayern. We failed that yet again. Clean sheets wise, we're getting closer to complete the objective. English way, we need Sancho and Saka to up their productivity. Maybe Jude Bellingham as well. It's not been that great of a season for our objectives, man. We just got to keep stepping things up, I guess. Okay, so the plan for today's episode, guys, we'll play the Revier derby against Schalke because it's a derby and Schalke have seemingly found a bit of form and have escaped the relegation zone, although it's not going to really impact the table this game. It's it's emotional one, you know, Revier derby. So we'll play the Revier derby, we'll play the couple of games against Chelsea and we'll probably simulate the rest because... Let's be real, in the Bundesliga, we don't really have much to play for apart from pride. We're completely rotating the team for this one, giving a lot of the youngsters a chance because it just makes sense to do so with big games coming up in the Champions League. So no Haaland for this one. We'll probably bring him on in the second half to give him some game time, but that's how the team's looking. The last time we played Schalke, we blew them out of the water and I'm hoping for the same. This time, let's hope the youngsters can get in on the action. Schalke already getting in behind. Already a better start for them in this game than the previous game that we played them. They almost scored. Thankfully for Berkey, who made a very big save there. That's exactly why I've put him in the starting 11, even though I've rotated pretty much the entirety of our team. Again, a chance for Schalke. This time, Zagadu helps clean things up. I don't know what the shadows are on the Schalke stadium, but I'm struggling to see the ball. They've got a chance now with a free kick from a dangerous area. And we've actually conceded a free kick here. Schalke lead 1-0. Wasn't expecting this, especially considering how bad they were the first time we played them. They've kind of found their form back. And the Revier derby looks to be an exciting derby once again. Okay, now I, I kind of like the challenge. Let's try and get the better of them in this one we've got a bit of motivation now to try and step things up come on axel witzel looking inside for wolf tries to slot this one but can't still wolf though gets the shot off it falls for renier and come on dude from that position renier you've got to be scoring disappointing man the the angle was perfect for a cross body how did he not generate enough power Haaland would have probably scored that man I feel like it's time to bring on the big guns, guys. But I don't have Haaland on the bench. I'm such an idiot, guys. Oh, God. We're going to keep Renier up top. But we'll bring on Jaden Sancho. We'll bring on Marco Royce, maybe? We'll bring on Royce. I don't even have Saka on the bench. I'm such an idiot, guys. Honestly. We'll put Royce on the left side, then. I know he can play in that position. That's pretty much all the good subs I can make. Maybe I play... Guerrero and Seth Witzel to bring a, a bit more of technique in the midfield. Let's hope this works. Marco Royce, good pass for Renier. Reina now sees the run of Rafael Guerrero. I'm going for the near post shot, but the keeper saves. How many chances do we need to score, man? If we can get something from like a set piece, how big would that be? Ah, not even from a set piece. And I think Marco Royce has picked up a knock. Let's hope he's able to walk this one out because if not... I think we'll be missing him for quite a while, and that is not good news. Zagadu bringing it forward. Now, maybe it's going to be our defender playing the through ball. It is Royce. Now, Jaden Sancho. The cutback for Marco. I don't even know what I was doing there. I accidentally passed the uh, pass button. I accidentally pressed the pass button. And I was... I had like... Yeah, I don't even know what I did there. My God. We somehow squared it for Marco. And he put it in. Ooh, that was stressful, man. That was stressful. Marco Royce, by the way, is playing with the knock. So let's hope it's not too serious. Sancho getting the assist there. The two substitutes combining to get the equalizer. Okay, Marco Royce has managed to walk away that injury. So that is a bit of good news. Marco 
Good pass for Reyna. Big chance here for him. I'm going to square it for Marco Royce again. It's simple football this time. I knew what I was doing. It was the smart thing to do. Royce had made the perfect run. Marco comes off the bench, picks up a knock, heals from it as well at the same time and ends up scoring a brace to turn things around here at the Riviere Derby. Away at the Veltins Arena as well. Couldn't have it any better. Reyna showcasing his talent with a good run and awareness to square that one for Marco. We're 2 one up again, Schalke. I thought we were going to lose this game and that would be pretty embarrassing, but nope, we've managed to turn it round. Out wide now for Thomas Munir. Inside for Renier. Looks for Guerrero. And now it's Marco Royce, who, by the way, is on a hat trick. Ah, oh, his shot gets blocked. And that should be full time. Would have loved to see Marco pick up a hat trick. But oh well, I'll still take a 2 1 win. We showed a lot of character to make the comeback. Good morale boost, I guess, before the big Champions League game against Chelsea. 50 points, guys, after 21 games would normally be considered like a good total. But when Bayern have 61, which is one draw and 20 wins, it's. I don't even know how Bayern are doing this. It's just incredible. Hopes for Bundesliga are as low as they can get. And that means the focus has got to be on competitions like the Champions League. Up next for us is the round of 16. And we need to give it everything. Okay, so this is going to be the first game. We test out Sancho on the left side and Saka on the right from the get-go. Looking at Chelsea. Well, they've got Christian Pulisic playing against his former team. Timo Werner has got experience playing against Dortmund. So there's that. Rudiger is German, so he probably knows the league. Interesting, very interesting Chelsea team. Good as well. They haven't made any new signings as per. Pretty similar to the team they've got in real life. That midfield of Kante, Kovacic and Jorginho is going to be difficult to beat. Looking at our team, apart from Sancho and Saka, Haaland, Royce, Guerrero, Chan, our first team is completely back in action. I'm ready for this, guys. We need a strong result at Stamford Bridge if we want to go through. Here we are, guys, at Stamford Bridge. A huge Champions League night this is for Borussia Dortmund, guys. Like, we can't overstate it. With our Bundesliga hopes being gone, crushed in the mud already, this is a competition where if we can go far, you just never know what can happen, man. You just, you never know what happens in the Champions League. Back in 2013, I think it was, Borussia Dortmund managed to get to a Champions League final, of course. They lost to Bayern, but still, they got there. Maybe in this series, we can make that happen. We've got a very good team, great players in all positions, and it all starts from here, the round of 16. We need to show and put up a good performance in this one against Chelsea. Let's also not get ahead of ourselves. This is only the first leg, first half, or you could... You could... Also, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is only... Also, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is only the first leg or the first half, you could say, of this tie. So we got to be really smart about everything we do, not be silly in terms of being so open defensively. Thankfully, Hummels cleared things up for us there. But yeah, we got to be careful, especially with the pace of Timo Werner going at us. Very keen on seeing the difference playing Saka on the right side makes because now he can cut inside and drive the ball inwards, which is going to be huge. So far, it's been a really good midfield battle, but now we've got a bit of space to break through as here's Haaland. Good touch. Haaland going for goal, goes for the chip and somehow Christensen with the block. That was going in because I had completely um, messed up Mendy's stance because he was going the wrong way. I'd sent him the wrong way. But Christensen, out of nowhere with a ridiculous block, saves Chelsea. Should have just gone for a power shot, man. Kovacic looking for that pass for Werner. Akanji had to time that tackle to perfection and that he did. Otherwise, it was going to be 1-0 Chelsea, I feel. My God, was that stressful. And now, I think Saka's broken through, looking for that early cross for Royce. Diving header, it's off the post. So unlucky for Marco Royce. What an attack from Borussia Dortmund. Saka with the perfect cross. Royce deserved that goal, honestly. We still have the ball though. Marco, what can he do though? Looks for Guerrero. Scooping this one for Sancho. On the volley, Sancho smashes it in London as Borussia Dortmund get the lead deservedly. So we just hit the post, but we didn't give up. We kept the attack running and Rafael Guerrero scooping this one for Sancho. And what a finish. And there's the five-star week for of Sancho coming up clutch for us as we get the first goal of the night. Have a look at the play here, guys. Rafael Guerrero, what a pass for Sancho on the volley as well. Superb stuff as Borussia Dortmund take the lead against Chelsea. Massive, massive goal for us away as well at Stamford Bridge. Huge. 
N'Golo Kante now looking for Timo Werner. Remember, Chelsea have got more than enough players capable of scoring. Werner. Back for Jorginho. There's that midfield and all combining for them. Timo Werner on the ball here. I made the challenge. Mistake with the challenge. Werner gets it again. Akanji again there. Puts in the challenge to perfection. And we get through as Haaland could be sent through on goal. Here goes Erling Haaland against Chelsea. Superb from him. Right foot shot keeper saves. Why not take it with your left man? We could easily be 2-0 or even 3-0 up. That's how good we've been in this first half. Oh god, Timo Werner has been sent through. Berkey trying to get in behind. And of course, Berkey manages to get there. How did he get ahead of Timo Werner? I don't know, but he got a big, big touch on the ball. Werner actually got there first, I think. Yeah, he did. But Berkey made himself so big. And that's a big save from our keeper. Still 1-0 Dortmund. But it's scary seeing Werner get in behind like that. Because you know he's got a goal in him always. At least on FIFA. Half time, and I think we've put in a great performance, especially considering it's away at the bridge. So far, it's been perfect. The fans are loving it, probably. Second half, more of this, man. But remember, we concede one goal, and I don't think we've got that big of an advantage. So, we got to remember that and try and double up our lead in the second half. She's Marco Royce here. Difficult angle. You know what? I'm just going to go for it with Royce. Forces a big save from Mendy. Maybe I should have taken it wide and go for a cross. But I thought, you know what? With Royce... He's got the great shot on him. You know what? Sometimes you just got to try and go for it. Didn't work out there though. Kovacic looking for that pass for Werner. And Atal got there. But Werner still has it. It's chaos. And I can't believe it. After playing so well over the course of these 60 minutes or so. We can see that. Once again, it's Timo Werner's impact of getting in behind and being so dominant. Celebrates with Thomas Tuchel as well. So, so dominant Werner is, man, in this game. Like, look at the way he got in behind. Just forced... Two of my players to charge towards him. Keeper was out of position. Jorginho gets an open goal. And well, it's 1-1. Now we still have the away goal advantage. But I don't want to go home uh, to the Signali Duna. I need to go win to go through, guys. I, I want to try and sort this out here. So come on, guys. Let's push for the winner. There goes Saka. Not been his best of games. But still could cause an impact as he looks for the cross for Erling Haaland. But that wasn't the best of deliveries. Now we still have it. Back for Saka here. Looking to open up some space that he does by finding Royce. And now it's Haaland who's through. Has to score this. Erling Haaland makes the breakthrough for us in this one. We restore our lead in the game. Haaland scores 2-1 Dortmund. And guess who was involved in the run of play? Saka, Marco Royce and then Haaland. Good to see Saka from the left. Allowed to, you know, be more creative. You know, getting it onto his left foot. A very incisive pass into Royce. Royce to Haaland and then bang. He scores yet another goal for Borussia Dortmund. Solid finish from our number 9. 2-1 now, Borussia Dortmund. And we've got two away goals from this one. Kovacic looks for that pass for Pulisic. Kante. Kovacic bringing it forward. Looks for Mason Mount. Look at the space Mount's got to work with here. But he goes backwards for Kovacic. Now Kante again. Chelsea playing some good football. Timo Werner looking for that pass. Hummels broke through. But I give it away cheaply. No. I get it back. No, I don't. It's Kovacic. It's terrible defending from me. Pulisic through against his former team. I can't believe how bad I defended that. I had the ball with Hummels. It was chaos everywhere. Oh my God. Pulisic against his former team scores. And celebrates as well. That is heartbreaking, guys. We still have the away goals advantage, but I would have loved to walk home from London with a good win against Chelsea. Everything to play for on the second leg, unless we can, of course, get another goal. That'll give us a big advantage, but I don't think there's enough time left. And there you have it, guys. Full time. What a game, though, against Chelsea, man. What a freaking game. A Champions League classic, you could call it. Everything to play for now on the second leg. Okay, so next up, guys, before the big game against Chelsea at the Signal Iduna, we've got like four Bundesliga games. And you guys know the situation for us in the Bundesliga. We're not winning the league this season and we're basically comfortable in that second spot. So we're going to sim all these four games and then play the Chelsea game to wrap up the episode. That's how we've got our team set up for this one against Wolfsburg. I'm expecting a big performance, a win and no injuries, man. That's my big priority. We get a one all draw against them who scored for us. Emre Chan with the goal. Reckon we should have won this. I cannot believe this offer, guys. Juventus have just reached out to us outside the window. They're offering Aaron Ramsey for Marco Royce. And I kid you not, 40,000. 
Guys, I, I don't even know what to say. What even is this for an offer? That is quite possibly the most stupid offer I've ever seen in career mode. 40,000 plus Aaron Ramsey who's 30 and is pretty terrible for Marco Royce. Guys, have you guys seen a worse offer than this? Let me know. This is a joke. Guys, what, what do I even say? That's actually... Ah, uh, dude. Reject offer. My god, that's just stupid. Getting this one against Stuttgart out of the way as well. And let's hopefully get back to winning ways in this one. We do. Haaland Saka scoring, which is nice to see. Emre Chan on target again. And now it's Freiburg we take on. Give me some Haaland gold. So far, no injuries. So I'll take that as well. Haaland scored twice in this one. Sancho as well. I'll take it a 4-0 and a clean sheet. You know I'm taking the Champions League seriously now because against Hoffenheim, I've literally gone for my complete second team. We're not messing about, guys. We're going to use the second team now. So we've got everyone fit for the Chelsea game. So even if I lose here, I'm okay with it. And um, yeah, we've taken a big L, I guess. Um, a 3-0. Yeah, a washout for Hoffenheim in this one. A hat-trick from Belfordil. But it's okay, guys. The focus for us is the Champions League. And rightly so, because even after all those results, Bayern Munich have just not dropped points. The only game they've dropped points was against us, and that was a draw. That is all. Apart from that, they've won every single game this season. We're pretty much five points clear of Leipzig and Gladbach and all. So we'll get Champions League next season and finish second. But Bayern have just ran away with the title. This is it. Everything to play for on the second leg against Chelsea now. We beat them and we're through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And also keep in mind, we've got the two away goals, which means if the game ends as a nil-nil draw, a 1-1, one -one, we're going through to the quarterfinals. So a bit of an advantage. Chelsea needs to score at the Signal Iduna Park. So let's make it difficult for them. Looking at the team, practically the same lineup I went with in that first leg against of course Chelsea so no changes there I'm loving Sancho on the left and Saka at the right we're gonna keep it that way let's get into this one and aim for the quarterfinals Timo Werner looking to break through Chelsea score early on in the game that will just kill my game plan because I want to try and make it extremely difficult for them to get that first goal because the longer Chelsea don't score the better it is for us and our chances to qualify but right now Chelsea have started off really strong guys they're, they're really taking the game to us. But we got to be alert, guys. But remember, if Chelsea keep pushing forward like this, we're going to get spaces to exploit on the counter like we're doing right now. Haaland looking for Saka. Big moment for Saka here. What can he do? Tries to play it back in with Thiago Silva. Red Saka like a book there. Kante just holding up the play. We're going in sliding. That didn't really work out well. Kante gets it back. Controlling the tempo of the game. And now it's Pulisic. They messed up, guys. If Pulisic played that one in for Werner, he would have scored. It's been so intense so far with Chelsea having all the opportunities and all the possession. Theo Hernandez surprisingly goes down. I don't know why. Ziyech with space to shoot. Hamels with a big challenge. So far, 20 minutes in at the Signal Iduna. We're just hanging on. Here we go now. It's Saka. Looks to bring it in. Sees Haaland. Big chance for us. Erling Haaland's through. Can we score? Oh, that is a powerful finish from Haaland. Yet another goal from Erling Haaland. Kicks the corner flag in the celebration and puts us into the lead. Saka there with the assist. A big moment for Saka as well. But what a strike from Haaland. That puts us right in the driver's seat because now Chelsea need to score a couple of goals. Which means we can just sit back, hold on to the lead and hit them on the break when spaces appear so it's the dream scenario for us Haaland bags yet another goal in the Champions League only his third goal that's a bit of a surprise guys maybe it's because of the injury he had but there you go big goals from Haaland today one in of course I believe uh, the, the first leg and now of course he scored in the second leg as well he loves the knockout rounds doesn't he Kante looking for that pass for Werner this is dangerous Timo Werner looking to turn our defense off the post that was lucky. That could be game-defining because if that goes in, momentum shifts to Chelsea. Timo Werner, man, for some reason on FIFA, he is just an animal, dude. Every time I play against him, it's so difficult to contain him. Another big chance for him. We got lucky with that one. As here's Marco looking for that ball for Haaland. Could score another one here. Couldn't get the shot off in a proper manner. Halftime, guys. We've got the perfect scenario right now because we're leading 1-0. Um, 3-2 on aggregate, but remember guys, Chelsea are capable of scoring 
Early minutes of this one, we were getting completely pinned back. They could have easily scored against us. Werner hit the post as well. The game is not over. The time is not. Uh, the tie is not over yet. Second half. Let's see. Maybe this is a bit of a controversial one, but I feel like Jude Bellingham. He's been in decent form. We're playing in England. It's only fair we play him in the second half and see what he can do. Mason Mountain space looks for Werner again. This is dangerous. I've blocked the cross or the pass, but he still gets past me. Still Werner with the trickery. Puts a cross in. We got to get it away. Yusuf Atal with a big clearance. But the ball is still with Chelsea. Kante now. This is the pressure I'm talking about, man. So difficult to play against. Mason Mount shoots. Akanji coming in flying with the block. What an episode he's had. My God. How are we hanging on to this lead? How have we not conceded? I just do not know. But I'll take it, guys. As Haaland now looks for Marco Royce here. Royce with the roulette. Ah, but Thiago Silva who's had a phenomenal game as well. Oh god, Werner's gotten through. There's no stopping him, guys. There's no stop. What? Timo Werner. That's more like Timo Werner in real life. How's he missed these chances? If Werner was clinical tonight, we'd be packing our bags and exiting the Champions League. Timo Werner. I don't know how he's done this. Wow. 1v1 against Berkey and he missed, man. Mental scenes. I'll take it, though. I'll take it. It all helps our cause. We could have genuinely been knocked out. And now Haaland's through. Looking to maybe score another one. Oh, wait, that's how you finish. Timo Werner better take a lesson from Haaland. That's how you finish. Look at how cool he made that look. I was thinking I'd go maybe a normal finesse shot. But decided the keeper might know that. And I just went bottom right corner. And it worked out perfectly. Erling Haaland getting in behind with his pace. Slotting this one home. Not making the keeper in the process. Doesn't get any better than that. Have a look at that for a finish. Oof. That was class. Three, no, it's um, four to an aggregate. It's basically over. Chelsea need to score three goals now. Sancho looking for Haaland, who's firing through. He wants the hat-trick, guys. Erling Haaland wants the hat-trick. And Erling Haaland gets what he wants. 78th minute, we wrap up the game. Dortmund lead 3-0 against Chelsea. It's an Erling Haaland hat-trick to send them packing their backs to London. Sancho with a lovely assist, although this was more... More like a Haaland solo effort because he got in behind with so much power and pace. And look at that for a finish. Just fired that one and rifled it in. I think Chelsea lost all their hope after those chances missed by Werner because they legitimately could have wrapped up their job. But they just didn't. They were wasteful and we took advantage of it. Chelsea now getting on the attack here. It's Kovacic, shoots and well, Berkey didn't even move. Looks like finally Chelsea get their shooting boots on but... It may be a little too late. Oh, we're sending Saka through now. We're sending Saka through. This is going to get ugly for Chelsea. Haaland has to score. That is four for Erling Haaland. Saka being unselfish there. And Haaland has just completely dismantled Chelsea. That's a classic Haaland performance for you. Just so, so direct at goal. Running in behind there. Getting in the right place at the right time. Saka did the right thing by laying it off. And that's yet another goal. For Haaland in the Champions League is already now up to what six goals in this competition he was at two before we started this game just madness and there you have it guys full time we've we've just destroyed Chelsea in this game but let's be honest guys this game could have could have gone either way especially with the chances Werner had and the early pressure Chelsea had we just got lucky that Chelsea didn't take their chances and we did and that's what sends us through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League the draw for the quarterfinals is yet to be made, so I can't spoil it for you guys. So next episode, you guys are going to be finding out who we'll be up against in the quarterfinals. And we'll be probably playing the two games in that next episode itself. So big episode for the Champions League. I'm so glad we made it to the quarters. Unbelievable showing from us. I think we can be honest with ourselves, there's only going to be one player of the episode nominee and that's Haaland. A four goal haul against Chelsea and some of them goals were brilliant as well. It's got to be him. And with that guys, this is where we're wrapping up today's episode of the Dortmund career mode. It was a madness guys, from weird swap deals to absolutely demolishing Chelsea and of course Signal Iduna Park. It was a great episode. Next episode, we keep going in the Bundesliga. Champions League quarters though is going to be our main focus. If you are enjoying the series, drop a like. Make sure 5,000 likes and you get an episode tomorrow. Subscribe if you're new around here and I'll catch you all next time.